how you look so quite emotional again with that reception you're getting from the family. Mm. Well, I'm a human being. I have feelings, <laughs> and and it was really, really nice the way they transmitted their love and support to the to the team, to every player, and, and obviously towards me as well. It's been a a really emotional year, a, a very special season, and um, and the team deserved and and the, our people deserved to end it in a in a good way. So I'm really happy. Uh, Granny Jacker's last game today. Uh, two goals, nearly a hat-trick as well, uh, a wonderful atmosphere for him and the Arsenal fans were saying we want you to stay. It must be quite emotional for you to see him leave the club. Do you know that? It's <laughs> <laughs> just, just news for me. And the season's over for Arsenal. What does the post-season look like for Mikel Arteta? Is it plenty of wine, family time, food? <laughs> Yeah, um, I need to get away. I need to be a few days with my family and and bring emotions and everything down. T um, I reflect, think, and I need to visualize um, and I need to feel it. So, what is going to be the best way? How we going to get this group of players again to, to a different level? And um, and today I cannot do that because I'm still in in the moment. And you said before the game, the one word to sum up the season was connection. Mm -hmm. And as you said on the opening question, that connection you felt was quite emotional for you as well, seeing your speech to the fans. Well, it was one of my dreams. Probably the biggest dream that I had is, is to connect again with the soul of this football club. And that um, our people, and we have done that, and there is no discussion about it. And that makes me really proud and grateful to be part of, of that journey together. And we want to deliver, obviously, success, and, and the destination has to be trophy success and, and enjoyment for this club. But we have to enjoy the journey together, and especially we have to enjoy the company. And I said it there because we have a special people in this club. We have incredible group of players, and, and we have an amazing support. And that has to be enjoyed because at the end it's about winning or winning the margin. But you cannot underestimate the rest because I think if we don't do it, um, we're going to regret it. How nice was it for Granite to get the reception that he did at the end? Well deserved. He had an incredible season. Um, I think one year back I spoke to him and I told him, um, question mark on you, you have to deliver more, you have to be better, I'm going to challenge you to play here. And he went back and I think he started to train the next day. And he came in pre-season, <laughs> four kilos less feet with this face and I'm really willing to do it. He's been exceptional, he's been a, a key part of the team, the success of the team. And, um, and I'm so happy that, um, that everybody's appreciating what he's done. When you see those scenes right at the end, Everyone's so happy. Is that an extra motivation to even have maybe even happier season, scenes sorry, next season? For sure. I think that has to give us uh, more energy and belief, you know, that um, that we are all together in this journey and, uh, and we want to become better and, and be the best. And in order to do that, we're going to have to improve and, and we know that the level is going to raise again and we're going to have to be up for it. Mikel, in the last couple of games, we've seen you use different players at fullback, um, sort of different profile players. Is that something that you're kind of tinkering with, looking ahead to next season? Is there a possibility that we had to adapt. Uh, obviously, we had some important injuries in our back line. We have three players out and, and we had seven players in the back line this season. And, and obviously, that was a concern. And uh, there were certain things that I wanted to adapt, certain things that I wanted to try because I've been thinking for a long time about those options because if not, we are very, very exposed. And uh, I am very happy when how it's done. Okay. I don't know. Obviously, we wanted to bring the club back to Champions League. That was the, the main target, you know, and that was already a, a big demand, uh, especially in the summer before we did certain things and we've, before we managed to, to keep some of our players. And then the journey started day by day. You start to, to have a feeling um, the team is moving in the right direction, the spirit, the energy is good. You start to win again, two, three, and you start to generate some, some belief, obviously. Um, we didn't expect to finish where, where we are. I think it's the, the third best ever record for in the history of the club in terms of points. The most wins ever um, is a lot, but it's still not enough to win it. <laughs> so 
we understand where the level is and uh, and if we really want to be the real <coughs> deal we not have to be happy with what we have and we have to be next season much much better We will try. I'm really interested in, in understand and, and reflect and analyze really what we have in the house and, and what are the resources that we have already and how we can improve, how we maximize and take players to a different level. The ones that we haven't got everything from there, do it. And, and then, yeah, the bonus will be um, make those decisions and, and improve the team. But uh, as well, we don't want to lose that cohesion that exists um, around the team and that understanding and um, and hopefully we'll make the right decisions. Just one more for me, if I can. The, the yeah? Apologies. Um, do you, um, there's been this thing that it may never come again for Arsenal because you've done so well, but all the other teams will strengthen. But if you look at it a different way, have you laid the foundations for what you could do next season? I think we have some great foundations. That is true. Um, but in a sport, you have to prove it again, you know, and you're going to have to be back in first day in precision and look at each other. And, and I don't want to see any complacency. And we've done doing well, and it's OK. It's, we want to, we're going to have to be much better. And, uh, and it's going to be a, a challenging season, but a season, plenty of opportunities. And one of those opportunities is to be consistent and do it again and do it better. And this is what we have to demand to each other. Last couple, Morgan Mikel, um, 26 games won, 88 goals scored, some great football along the way, and you know the records have been shattered in recent seasons for Arsenal. When you sit back and analyse the whole season as you all do, where in your mind would you think this is where it tailed off? You spoke about 24 players needed to go in April and May, yeah. didn't have that. So are those are the kind of things where you look back and say, this has to now get better if we challenge again next season. For sure. When we get to that stage, we are in the same position. We need everybody healthy at this best. That's crucial. But there are specific moments uh, that cut certain momentum that we had that, in my opinion, was, was crucial. And maybe it wasn't enough because we're still winning <laughs> some of those games. Maybe it wasn't enough because they could have done 92 or 93 or 95 points. So that's, that's the reality as well. We don't know, but um, for sure we're going to take some learnings from, from that experience. Uh, the two goal leads, we're talking about games at Liverpool, yeah. at West Ham, the home games here against Brighton, Southampton. Yeah. We've seen them all. Those are the fine margins, aren't they? Very fine, but this is as well. We have won a lot of games by fine margins. We have to be honest and, and clear with, with ourselves as well. So uh, this is football. In this level, in this league, um, winning 5-0, it doesn't happen too often, unfortunately, for all the managers. Last one. Yeah, can I just get your um, thoughts on actually the changing financial landscape in the Premier League? You know, Manchester United look like they have a new owner. They're talking about other clubs strengthening. Um, with big money here, but also other clubs, you know, they're potentially in problems. Can you give us a feel for how you think it's going to go over this summer and how instrumental it's going to be for the league as a whole? Yeah, it's a lot of conversations around it. Uh, obviously, it's not my expertise, but um, I understand what is happening. Um, we have to understand the context. Uh, we have to look at ourselves and, and within the context, what is... Um, our best possibility to be where we want to be. And that's the only thing that we can control and make sure that, uh, that we are smart and, and we do the things the right way.